This is episode eight of Fun with Fallen Flags. Gold! <laughs> we're going to talk about gold. Um, a lot of the railroads were put in place so that they could go out and retrieve uh, the raw materials uh, in the West. And a lot of it was minerals, was silver and gold and lead and molybdenum and whatever else they happen to want to go after. Um, also, there was uh, ranching and sheep and cattle, and there was uh, lumber. But uh, we're going to focus on raw materials that were basically uh, minerals in this episode. The other stuff would make great episodes in the future, but this is just some of the stuff that we uh, um, uh, that I came across that I found really fascinating. And the more I thought about it, I thought this is actually make a really good episode. So, um, like we've always talked, we're going to do the history piece of it, and then we're going to do the modeling piece of it. So I'm going to switch it around real quick. So for modeling, I think a lot of modelers actually go out and build kits, scratch build stuff, etc. And may not actually have been inside a mine or a uh, mill or, you know, seen some of the uh, transportation aspects of it. So we're going to talk about that. So um, I've got a lot of stuff that I can show, but I want to make sure that everybody knows that um, we're going to focus on that. Um, if you are looking for anything that you want to do on the model railroading side of it, there's so much material out there. Um, remember, we want to talk about model railroading as, um, as half of the episode. Um, so I'm not really going to talk about that uh, for this week. Because you can find mines and mills and kits and, and all kinds of detail stuff. So that's not a problem. Um, I just want to make sure that we have the opportunity to discuss um, some of the processes that were used. So when you look at a mill or a mine or um, mules or um, a uh, or bin or whatever you kind of understand where it falls in the whole scheme of things um, so anyway um, we will uh, go through some photos and I'll kind of explain the processes um, and then at the end we'll take questions I don't think there'll be any questions <laughs> but please if you are interested in uh, sending me feedback please do so the like and uh, don't like, thumb up, thumb down, please do that. Um, I really uh, appreciate the comments that I've gotten. So um, let's go ahead and get to some of the process. So the process starts with a mine shaft that goes either horizontally into the side of a mountain or vertically down a shaft. Once inside, ore carts can help move large amounts of material around, but it's still a dangerous job with cave-ins, fires, floods, other health issues. The ultimate goal is that the ore carts were filled with the rough ore and they were transported out of the mine and sent to a ore bin that would collect from one shaft, multiple shafts, uh, essentially all the ore would end up in the ore bin and then collected and transported on to the next step. If the mine like this one had a shaft that came out and went straight into an ore bin that was pretty efficient. The um, structure underneath that is actually a tramway so the tramway would be used to haul the ore in buckets across a valley um, over difficult terrain, rivers, whatever, um, that's essentially the condensed version that you see here. A mine that has a vertical shaft such as this one is going to use a head frame, a wheel at the top, and the cable is going to run over the wheel at the top straight down into the mine shaft. The other end is going to have a drum with operating levers to control the height of the cable in the mine. The drum and operating levers will sit in a hoist house with controls for 
the uh, the equipment or possibly a smaller one for prospectors if it's perhaps not a well-established mine. This smaller mine may not have had quite such an elaborate setup. So let's talk about tramways. Tramways are used to transport a large amount of material across great distances that otherwise uh, mules and uh, wagons would be unable to get the material efficiently to the mill. Ultimately all we're trying to do is we're trying to get the material out of the mine into an ore bin at the mill. So these tramways essentially are just trying to move material and largely to reduce costs. And trams can move supplies and people back to the mine as well. So this is where the mill comes in. What it does is it removes waste material, crushing the rock down with using water and gravity till only the concentrate is left. Some of the mills look like this and are well maintained and are very rich wealth producing facilities. Not all mills look quite as kept up as this one. Um, some of them are only used while they're needed and really not that much money is put into them and they basically appear like this one which appears like it was essentially abandoned when any of the material from the mine no longer produced any revenue. At the beginning of the process Everything is fed by gravity and water, so each of the mills required a large repository at the top of it for water, either water tanks or vats or some under underground um, system to provide water for the mill. Uh, not only to process the ore, but also to power the steam engine that was inside the mill. The mill would provide power to all of the equipment and tools. Uh, also, it provided heat, especially in the wintertime. Some of these locations are pretty remote and they definitely needed to be heated. The grate, or grizzly as it was called, begins the process. The rock is thrown onto the grizzly and basically the smaller chunks of material would fall through it and anything that didn't fall through would get crushed in a rock crusher. After that material was fairly uniform in size, the stamp batteries would take over and these material, these devices would crush the material down to a more uniform size, fairly fine sand material that size of material, it was easier to process it through the uh, tables. Large mills would have a, dozens of stamp batteries, each on its own foundation to limit vibration to the building, all in order to process as much ore as possible. The pulverized material would then be washed over what's called an amalgamation table. The table combined the ore particles with mercury. After it passed over the amalgamation table and that process was complete, the concentration table would remove the rich ore concentrate by washing it over ridges and the table would vibrate allowing the concentrate to settle into the grooves. Anything that wasn't collected during this process was discarded because it was material that had very little value. Colorado is covered with tailing piles. They're easy to spot. They're brightly colored. They're on the sides of mountains all over the place. So during the 1800s, the process that was primarily used was the amalgamation process. Um, in around 1900, there was a new process that they were started using. It was the cyanide process. 
And what essentially happened was cyanide was added to the um, particles that had gold within them and cyanide would dissolve the gold then and it would sit in large soaking tubs so that process would extract it and then they would filter out the gold after that was done then in the 1920s they came up with another process it was called the flotation process and they pulverized the material and then they would pass it through bubbles and the lighter material would go up and float out of the bubbles and the heavier material in theory the silver the gold etc would settle down into troughs within the uh, settling tables so there's actually multiple kinds of processes but if you're looking at the processes that were used during the early cold rush times it was essentially the amalgamation the only surviving mill in the United States on public land is called the Sound Democrat Mill. It's a seven stamp, five concentration table. It was built between 1905-1906, remodeled in 1909. It's a typical amalgamation concentration stamp mill. Here's its tram tower. This is the rock crusher that is at the top of the process. Then it has two different types of stamp mills in it. Uh, in a stamp battery here, uh, there's a second type of stamp battery here called the Nielsen stamp battery. And then the last picture is the concentration table. It's actually flipped over. Once that process is done, the material from the mill is sent to a smelter like this one in Durango, Colorado. All right, so that's it for this episode of Fun with Fallen Flags. And I told you this episode was going to be gold. <laughs> so I appreciate everybody who is viewing this video. And I would appreciate it if you gave me some feedback. Thumbs up, thumbs down, post some comments. Uh, and let me know if you have any suggestions for future episodes. I'm all open to that as well. We will see you guys next week for episode nine. Thanks, everybody.